I'm Leandra Letterman, and it's time to break into tax. I'm really pleased to have a guest co-host today. I'm Emily Satterthwaite from Georgetown Law. Today's topic is computing gain or loss from the sale or other disposition of property. There are a lot of code sections involved here, and we'll go through them basically in order, but stay tuned until the end of the video for a full list of all the code and regulation sections that we cover. A great place to start with any tax question is the Internal Revenue Code. And Code Section 61 provides the definition of gross income. It provides that, except as otherwise provided in this subtitle of the Internal Revenue Code, gross income means all income from whatever source derived, including but not limited to the following items. And paragraph three is gains derived from dealings and property. So those are included in gross income. How do we interpret this? A great place to go are the Treasury regulations accompanying Section 61. Look at Regulation-6. There, we are given details about gains derived from dealings in property. It tells us that generally, the gain is the excess of the amount realized over the unrecovered cost or other basis for the property sold or exchanged. And then the regulation sends us to another part of the statute, section 1001. Let's take a look at that section. It's a really important section that actually provides the formulas for computing gain or loss. So code section 1001A provides for the computation of gain or loss. And it says that the gain, implicitly the gain realized from the sale or other disposition of property shall be the excess of the amount realized therefrom over the adjusted basis provided in section 1011 for determining gain and loss, implicitly loss realized, shall be the reverse, the excess of the adjusted basis provided in such section for determining loss over the amount realized. And for the realization doctrine, see our video, this is realization. Now, so what is this amount realized that code section 1001A refers to? That's a term of art, and it's defined in the very next subsection. So subsection B of section 1001 defines amount realized. The amount realized from the sale or other disposition of property shall be the sum of any money received plus the fair market value of the property other than money received. That's the basic definition. It's essentially the sales proceeds from the disposition of the property. Notice that there are a lot of cross-references here. For more on that, check out the Break into Tax video, How to Read a Tax Statute. So now we know what the concept of amount realized is, but we need to go back to 1001A to figure out how we determine adjusted basis. In A, we're told that the rules for adjusted basis are provided in section 1011. Under section 1011, adjusted basis for determining gain or loss. In A, we're told that the adjusted basis for determining the gain or loss from the sale or other disposition of property shall be the basis determined under section 1012 or other applicable sections of the subchapter or some other subchapters and as adjusted as provided in section 1016. And so what that's saying is the adjusted basis is just the basis, but then you adjust it under 1016. So what section 1011 does is just kind of collect cross-references. It just points the reader to section 1012 or another statute for the initial basis in an asset. And don't forget to watch the break into tax video on that topic. And then it provides that that basis is adjusted under a different code section, section 1016. Code section 1011, cross-referenced section 1012. Let's take a look at that now. The heading of section 1012 provides that the basis of the property is cost. And if we look at subsection A, it says the basis of property shall be the cost of such property, except as otherwise provided in this subchapter or a few other subchapters. Let's now look at the adjustments under section 1016 
that section 1011 told us we have to apply in order to get adjusted basis. So code section 1016 covers adjustments to basis. It provides as a general rule the proper adjustment in respect to the property shall in all cases be made for the list of things. So you have to know from general tax principles whether the adjustment is going to be upwards or downwards. And just as an example of a couple of them, paragraph one provides that adjustment is made for expenditures, receipts, losses, or other items that are properly chargeable to capital account with some exceptions. Paragraph two provides for an adjustment in respect of any period since February 28, 1913, for exhaustion, wear and tear, or obsolescence, in other words, depreciation, amortization, and depletion to the extent of the amount provided in the statute. Depreciation, amortization, and depletion are downward adjustments to basis. And in our basics of basis video, we mention adjustments under code section 1016. So don't miss that video too. So now we followed a lot of cross references and it's time to go back to section 1001. In 1001, we've looked at A and B, but we need to make sure we look at C as well, which is titled recognition of gain or loss. And it tells us that except as otherwise provided, in the subtitle, the entire amount of the gain or loss determined under the section on the sale or exchange of property shall be recognized. So there's a presumption of recognition. That presumption of recognition is really useful absent the application of a non-recognition provision. And don't miss the break into tax video on non-recognition transactions. But on the law side, be careful because you typically need an authorizing section for a loss even to be authorized, and then there may be disallowance provisions that apply that preclude deduction of the loss. So what this video has shown you is that you take the amount realized on the sale or other disposition of property, you compare that to the basis of the property adjusted as provided in section 1016. And if the amount realized exceeds the adjusted basis, you have gain realized. If the adjusted basis exceeds the amount realized, that difference is loss realized. And then you look at the separate question of whether the gain or loss realized is recognized for tax purposes. Let's illustrate the calculation of gain with an example. If the taxpayer has a $20 adjusted basis in a painting, after any adjustments under section 1016, and then sells the painting for $100. The $100 is the amount realized. The adjusted basis is subtracted from that, giving $80 of gain realized. And then that realized gain is recognized because there's no non-recognition provision that applies in this example. Let's illustrate the calculation of loss with an example. Suppose a taxpayer has a painting and her adjusted basis is 110. We would compare that to the amount that she's selling it for, which was $100. And because the adjusted basis is greater than the amount realized, the $100, we would have a loss realized, which would be $10. That $10 loss would be recognized. And whether that $10 loss would be deductible would depend. So in this video, we've walked through how to compute gain or loss from the sale or other disposition of property. Thank you for joining us as you break into tax. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from Break Into Tax.